The idea is to build uh, a mathematical model that will allow policymakers to uh, evaluate the effects of their choices in, in a very special field. We focus on research and innovation policies and we want to um, have this tool, this um, mathematical tool that would allow policymakers to see the effects of this or that research and innovation policy uh, on the macroeconomy in general or even more general on society. Uh, so it is very challenging um, because we need to um, not only focus on research and innovation but also on the many aspects uh, of the economy, so the whole macroeconomy. So labor market, for example, financial market, everything. The second difficulty and the second, I think, exciting aspect is to make it simple, to make it usable by policymakers. So um, ideally what we are targeting, and there are good chances that we'll achieve that, um, is to have a, a simple online interactive tool uh, by which policymakers could uh, simulate the effect of this or that policy. For, for example, um, a, a, given, a given country or even a region uh, could uh, be unsure whether to increase the funding for research and development, for example, more subsidies to private firms, or you know, um, expand uh, basic research done at universities, for example, or change uh, the patent laws. And you know, then you know the policymaker would press a button and, and see uh, what is going to happen to the region or their country uh, in the short, medium, and long run. It all started from the European Union. So the European Union is interested in uh, uh, trying to increase the competitiveness of the whole the whole area, and um, therefore wants to invest a lot. In, uh, in research and innovation. So the Horizon 2020 itself is, uh, is uh, a big investment in basic research, including our own research. Um, so uh, since it is a, this is a period in which public finances are more careful than in the past and they want to know what is value for money and what is not, uh, it becomes important to assess uh, the overall uh, um, costs and benefits and overall effects of um, the research and innovation policies. You know, once we have um, done the hard job of creating this, this model um, and the interactive tool that policymakers could use, it would be very interesting to adapt it to the Swiss um, situation to give some likely scenarios of the possible effects of this or that change in policy or maybe even of this or that referendum or so. So uh, I think it's potentially extremely useful. So research and the innovation policies will affect the whole macroeconomy. Okay? It is difficult to put the whole macroeconomy together, but we can say that you know, there are several firms in different sectors, in many, many sectors, and we will analyze the different sectors. Uh, well, the impact on, on my research, I, I think, I mean, I expect it to be extremely, extremely important because uh, at the moment we cannot take any, uh, any model off the shelf and just adapt it to uh, such a complicated research question, but we have to develop our own model uh, or models because we plan to use more than one and combine them together coming from different uh, perspectives. Um, so uh, this would be a, a, an important research outcome in general that will become journal, article, publications uh, and so on. Um, so this would be extremely important academically as well because methodologically it is very, very complicated to move from the current simple models to something that could encompass uh, uh, such a you know, rich uh, uh, background, you know, the whole economy. Uh, the academic environment is becoming more and more complex and if you want to remain on top of your field you need to update your knowledge extremely fastly, you need to travel, you need to, to have international um, connections that will alert you as soon as uh, as a new idea ca comes around. Um, and also it must be a high quality network. 
competition is not only difficult for, for private firms, uh, but also for academics at the moment. But this is challenging, this is interesting, this is nice, like in sports, you know, if, you know, if, if many countries uh, train and participate at the Olympics, then, you know, we can, uh, we can set better, uh, you know, world records. It is a very, a very nice experience, I think, also at the human level, because it's kind of, you know, helping us to mediate between different approaches.